happy families are very much the same, noted the Russian writer Leo Tolstoy some 100 years ago. And ever since then, that maxim has not changed. Perhaps the only thing that could be added to it is that prospering happy families are even more so the same. This fact in itself offers protection from the annoying curiosity of outsiders. Where from, how and when, it's actually no one's business. Fedig Zangman is known in many countries for his plants and factories. He is known in countries by all who produce electronic equipment. He is known as the chairman of the board of directors of a powerful firm which he founded almost 30 years ago. Scientists, designing engineers, and technologists know Felix Zandmann also as a prominent physicist. But very few people know why his firm is such a strange name that cannot be translated into English. Bichet. In reality, however, the answer to this mystery is quite simple and has an unusually human touch to it. Here, Felix is only 10. It was taken in 1938 when his hometown of Grodno was still Polish and there was no portent of trouble. This is his grandfather and his especially beloved grandmother. And Felix named his firm in honor of her. It's the name of the village where she was born. The snapshot shows her grandmother and grandfather 15 years after the wedding. They already have six children. The arrow shows Zhenya, Felix's future mother. She's standing. And here she's already sitting. Standing behind her is Felix's future father, happy newlyweds, the year 1926. They have only 17 more years to live. At that time, in 1938, Polish was the main language at school. A year later, the entire class started learning Russian. And in another two years, even this joy came to an end. Life came to an end. The fascists herded all the Jews in Grodno and, of course, Felix's family into a ghetto. We were unable to find newsreels of the ghetto in Grodno, but it looked no better than this one in Lawns. It could not be better because everything was organized according to one of the same racist laws and subordinate to one of the same secret and sadistic order. According to a program that was called the final solution of the Jewish question, trainloads of people departed from the Grodno ghetto, just like from this Lord's ghetto, and headed to concentration camps, factories of death. Even today, we do not know how many people perished in the Grodno ghetto. Some sources give the figure 29,000, others 44,000. family of Felix Zandman perished. His father, mother, uncles, aunts, grandfather, grandmother, cousins. He himself survived by a miracle. Not alone, of course, but we'll learn more about that later. In the newsreel archives, we managed to find sequences that were shot when Grodno was being liberated after three years of occupation. It's a city with a history over 800 years old. At one time, it was the center of a duchy and residence of the legendary king of Poland, Stefan Batori. The orders of Dominicans, Franciscans, Jesuits, Bernardines, Carmelites conducted their work here. And for many centuries, Jews settled down here. And here is Grodno after the four most terrible years in its entire history. Practically half of the city lays in ruins, especially the industrial and public buildings. But there was something more horrible than these ruins. Virtually in the first days of the war, and Grodno was seized by the Germans on the second day, June 23, 1941, several concentration camps and two ghettos were set up in Grodno, where 18,000 war prisoners and 33,000 civilians perished. 21,000 inhabitants of Grodno were taken away to Germany to perform slave labor.
were met by the surviving inhabitants. Among them, a very few number of those who had miraculously lived through the ghetto. And among them was 16-year-old Felix Sun. Almost a half a century has passed since then. Of course, the city was born anew and grew in size and changed during this period, but not to such an extent that one could consider the trace of the great tragedy of the Second World War to have disappeared forever. Trying to escape from the ghetto were hanged from this balcony. This is once a synagogue where Jews were herded before being sent off to concentration camps. People which are not needed. So that was very young kids. Not young kids. My father was not a young kid. And my grandfather, my father, my mother, my grandparents, all these animals were taken. And they wanted to take Sander Fredovich. Yes, Sander Fredovich was on the list too. Yeah. He begged himself out. He showed the diploma from, uh, from Danzig yes. to Visa, and he says, you stay. And my father showed it from Vienna. He tore, tore it out, and we had to go. He yes. was after all the police? Uh, because because of, yeah. they demoted him, mm -hmm. and they put, there was a new regime. Gestapo took over the ghetto. They put a new police manager, and the previous police chief was taken together with us. And, they, and the train left to Treblinka. When they found it, the Germans, they didn't want to organize a new, a new transfer. They brought them back to the ghetto. So I found them in the ghetto later. By the time you reunited came. again, and then deported again. Your sister again. and all. They yes, sir. And then again. My uncle's. It used to be called Waldman. Then it was called Tarbut, Hebrew Gymnasium, and we went to school there. It looks exactly the same way. Exactly, no change. The windows are the same. Everything. Everything stayed just the way it is. Yeah. Yes, there was a football court here, yes. And it's, it's done. That's right. This bridge is called Piaskova. Many friends, many. But this building, Piaskova 7, here they're completely Jewish. The young people were chosen. I went there. There were Mayer and Haisha. It was your sister. Mm -hmm. Fania and her husband. And the fraudulent two children. And what we did, we went here is the attic. You see this slope here? Mm -hmm. So this was opened from the side through the kitchen. And we climbed there, we closed it, and we were sitting there. Okay, we were waiting for the and the bad place, well, the not very good place to hide, was in the attic over there. We just closed with some with some laundry. How old did you work? 62. Oh, your father, you mean? No, no my father. grandfather. Your grandfather, no. no. Yeah. He didn't want to hide, because he said, who is going to keep the children? Mm. So he stayed with Fanny's son and with Lisa's daughter, which people didn't let to hide, because they would cry. Sure. So after one night and so on, quiet, children don't, don't cry, and I couldn't bear that. So I said, I will go. You? Yes. So I went down. And I went down, there was a arena, this, you see this, where water runs through, there was one over there. So I went through down on that, they opened the, club, the place, I went down, I went through, there was nobody already, they were taken. And I want to go back, I said, unfortunately, everybody's gone. And I want to go up, and I can't go up, I will slide on. Couldn't go up. It's too bad. Yes, closed, they closed, and I said, I will go to hide to the other place. And I went to hide to the other place. You know what happened? This place was found. The 
this house lived Sander and his wife yeah. and the children. Here on the, on the lower floor, on the upper floor, lived Trisha, the other brother. You remember that? No. Right? You agree? <laughs> okay. Okay. And then he goes farther. Here were the stores. You were sitting there. And in the morning, somebody put a ladder, ladder here and with nails closed the door and blocked us inside. There was Sandra, his wife Sarah, the grandpa, and my mother closed. We fled from the ghetto and we fled to our house to hide. So, so eventually we ended up here and we slept here a couple nights. There nobody knew we were there, but somebody somehow overheard because during the day there was catch here and workers were working. And they probably figured out that somebody was there. So they put a ladder, they went on top, closed with nails the door, and said, we caught the Jews. If you go through this door, there is a cellar. And in the cellar, there was a hole in the wall, thank God, and you went through the hole, and you fled on the other side, there is a garden and house. And then we came to another, to another family. That was an attempt to survive, to escape from the ghetto. It was also the first lesson of betrayal, even for the sake of saving one's own life, one's children, but nevertheless it was betrayal. They realized that the city of fear was not to be trusted. The second time Felix and his uncle and escaped from the camp, just a few hours before of being sent off to Treblinka. They did not know then that was in store for them, but that desperate escape brought salvation. It was very, very nice. People would come to swim, and our platter was down here. There were stairs. Mm -hmm. On the left was Sam Thurgood. I knew here every single stone, every tree, everything. People would come here every summer for two months, three months, June, July, and August. And Besides that, there's yet another story connected with this place, which is called Los Osna. Long before the war, Felix's tender-hearted grandmother once helped a young expecting Polish woman. Her name was so Anna Puchalska. Exactly was she was not only grateful to the grandmother, but was able to help her grandson in a situation that was even more dangerous and responsible. This photo was taken in 1949. This is Anna's family. And now try imagine all of them six years younger, and you'll see the Buchalska family in the winter of 1943, when Felix knocked on the door to be followed by another four escapees. It's now right here. the kitchen, of course. Yes. This was the kitchen, she now said. Now it is there. Now it is there, and therefore, it, uh-huh. Mm, so. I am not, I am not sure. Just a minute. Just a minute. Here's a photo of the house. We have rebuilt it and changed the inside too. <coughs> This was not here, and this was not here. This was built anew. My husband was still a little boy, and he helped his parents to rebuild the house. If you lift up the floor, you'll see a hole here. Now, there's nothing in that hole, but at that time, there were five of us in it. We were hiding in it for 18 months. Yes, this is the place. Three of us would sleep lying on the side, while the other two sat. We always took turns. The hole is one meter by one and a half meters by one meter. This is Felix and Anna Puchalska soon after the liberation in 1944. Many years later, in honor of that kind-hearted and courageous Polish woman, 
Felix Zahnman planted a tree in Jerusalem in the Holocaust Museum on the land of the righteous. I want to find the well. We threw the earth from that hole here so that no one would know we were digging a hole. There must be a second well here. There is the well. And here in the room under the floor, there's also a well filled with earth. Another well. Oh, those are precisely the two wells. Well, here's the real well with water and the second one with earth to conceal it. There was a mound here. We ourselves eaten it out when we came here. Have you found everything? Found now she says yes, there was another one here, which they found. This is one of the men with whom Felix sat in the hole for 18 months, Uncle Spender, the only relative who survived the nightmare of the war. And Felix is grateful precisely to him for the help he got in the first years of freedom and studies. I didn't see the sun for one and a half years. There were five children in that family. Truly a surprising story. Two parents and the children. No one knew we were hiding here. And the children didn't know, only the elder children. Kindness breeds kindness. One good deed always gives rise to another good deed. This is Sabina, Anna's daughter. She was the only one in the family besides the mother who knew about the secret hiding place and its dwellers who brought them food. Sabina's son is now in America. He works for me. He's like a son to me. Sabina Kazimierczyk Kukalski and her son Zdzisław Kazimierczyk to come forward. Proszę bardzo. Sabina Kukalski says her parents would have been proud to be recognized by the Jewish community. But like so many others who risked their lives, they are dead now. Troas believes we have a moral obligation not to forget them. In honor of Anna and Jan Kuchowski, who in spite of enormous risk, sheltered Jews fleeing from the Nazis, with enduring gratitude and admiration, the Anti-Defamation League of Madrid presents the Scholars and Care Award, November 4, 1989. <laughs>
Felix Zahnmann's visit to Grodno was not only a journey into the past, not only a search for trace of the tragedy of his family. As a businessman who has been dealing with the Soviet Union for a quarter of a century already, he has met the local authorities, people from his hometown, and told them about things that were hushed up for years, things that were not mentioned in books, city references, and guidance books, things that could not be learned at school or college. Can you imagine what it was for Jews to be here? Every Jew was killed, but even those people who wanted to help the Jews could also have been killed. The punishment for helping Jews was death. That was very dangerous for the whole family, and especially the children. Grodno has been in my mind all my life. My children have not been here, but they know everything about Grodno. And now I tell my grandchildren about Grodno. Perhaps we shall come here with them. After all, our roots are here. Grodno was a Jewish city. Up to 60 and even 70 percent of the people here were Jews. The population was 40 to 45,000, and 30,000 were Jews. All of them were killed here during the war. Only some 70 or 80 persons managed to survive. Only Lisa, myself, and several other persons came out of the ghetto. Perhaps only about 50 people from the camp managed to survive, as well as those who were taken out to Russia. For example, Stavropolsk was still in Siberia. That's how he managed to survive. Yusuf Schwartz also survived. He was in the army. And here is the main event of that brief visit by Felix Zandler. People from the United States, Poland, Moscow, Saratov and Lvov, from other cities of the Soviet Union, have come here to pay tribute to the memory of 29,000 inhabitants of Grodno and its suburbs who had been interned in this ghetto and who, having lived through inhuman suffering, humiliation and pain, were sent off to their death. And the whole tragedy and horror, all the inhumaneness of that, lies in the fact that these people were absolutely innocent before their butchers. And the only reason why women and men, their children, and elderly folk were put to death was that they were Jews. Just think of that. Jews were doomed to death only because they were Jews. Practically 50 years have gone by since the day when the last group of the ghetto inmates were dispatched along this road to their death. But it is only today that there has appeared the possibility to unveil this plaque in memory of the victims of that tragedy. And this only because new people have come to the leadership of the city. So this plaque is but a token for nothing was said about the tragedy of the Jews for 50 years. Only bad things or nothing at all was said about them. For Felix Zahnmann, for each one of them, this is more than simply a memorial plaque. No one knows the real burial place of the remains of their relatives. And that is why this is the only place where they can come to bow their heads in memory of their near and dear ones.